guys welcome back to my channel it's Marisa how is everyone today so I did start filming this a little late today Ooh, I almost knocked something over what else is new I am a klutz anyway yeah like I had said in another video my family is home this week uh, school winter break so um, it's been a little difficult so my my kind of schedule for the day is a little off but I'm not trying to stress out about it. I'm just working around them. Anyway, so today we're just going to do a couple of quick things. It's not going to be a super long video. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to show you how I varnish my tiles. These are these been dry. These have been dry for hours and hours and hours. Um, what I did do was I did varnish this one with two coats it's really beautiful and uh, it does look like it has some bubbles in it and i'm thinking that it's the tile itself because this has happened several times and even i do torch a little bit but it's still really really pretty and i don't really mind that it just came out really beautiful um what i am going to show you is how to put the cork on the back and i did um, I like to leave paint or actually add paint to the back uh, after this is dry um, because the cork will be covering most of it and then you'll get us to see a little edge here of the color which makes it look like a really finished um, piece. So here are the cork pieces and that they come with it. Um, this set, I think it was a set of 12 and it came with these. And I believe it was like $17, so, eh, you know, I, it's a little pricey. Uh, I think there was 12 or 15 of them, I'm not sure. Um, they do have them in the square and in the round, that's what I saw. Um, but I kind of like them because they're not glazed, and they do come with cork pieces. So I kind of like that, and I like the way they're packaged. They're packaged very, very well in a box, and they're each individually uh, two in a pack. So what I have been using is this Triart liquid glass and it has, see, it has a, re a resin finish. It is a pouring medium, but you could also use it as uh, a varnish. And this one I like better only because there's no um, brush strokes. It's kind of like self-leveling, almost like self-leveling, you know, the way resin kind of self-levels. And I really like that because no matter what brush I use, when I use other varnishes, it's like I really, I get, I can get less um, brush strokes with certain resins or using certain types of brushes. But this one, there's no brush strokes. It just kind of self-levels. And then I torch a little bit if I see a lot of bubbles, which there usually isn't. I th actually think it's like the, the surface of the tile, I think, popping through. Or maybe the paint. Um, and this is like, you know, this is not real hair. Um, and this came with a set of three. This is the medium size one I like to use for this size. I have a smaller one and I have a larger one. And I believe um, a set of these was maybe five, six dollars, I think, on Amazon. But they're like uh, not real hair, with like acrylic hair, whatever. Um, they're really, really soft. And what I usually do is I wash them after I use this with a little warm water and some dish soap. And it it keeps it really nice and soft because you don't want your brushes getting hard and then because then, then just, they're just garbage after that so that's how I wash uh, my brushes so we're just going to be varnishing today really quick and then I'll show you how I put on the cork piece okay and we'll just do one coat together and I'll probably go back on my own and do a second coat because it's gonna take a while to dry the paint dries really fast but the varnish takes at least an hour or two just to you know make sure like it's not tacky and then you can put another uh another coat on and then it's done and then we're going to be unmolding the big daddy and i kind of start unmolding it a little bit just to get you know uh, anything that got stuck here and we're going to unmold this guy now i made some more uh, resin art last night 
because uh, I can't help myself, but also because I wanted to test the liquid diamonds because it's supposed to. Now, it is so far, this is the third type of resin I've ever bought. It is the most expensive one I've bought so far, uh, but it's not crazy, crazy expensive. And I thought I was actually going to finish the, all the bottle, uh, the two bottles up last night. I actually had more. I didn't want to go crazy last night. What I wanted to do was... Um, test out to see how crystal clear this resin uh, cures. Okay, that's what I wanted to test. So there is just a little bit of the neon pink pigment in here, but there is a lot of clear. I could put like a couple coats of clear and with um, the Cupid Chunky Glitter from Primal Flow, I put that in there. So these are pretty much all clear. I made some Gabachon. Um, I kind of stopped at that size here because I didn't really want to make any more. Um, and then with the rest of them, there's just uh, the unic unicorn glitter from uh, Primal Flow and the uh, Cupid uh, chunky glitter from Primal Flow. And then this, I just added a little bit. I, I kind of cool. I dotted on some pink resin here but it's primarily uh just clear and then this is that really pretty fairy um i think something got caught on here rats uh anyway you didn't see that uh <laughs> the fairy glitter i bought from amazon um, yeah, I'll show it to you when I come back. It's really pretty. It has, this is the one with the stars in it. It has little hearts. It has open hearts. It has, it's like a little set of 12, um, little cases of the glitter and a lot goes a long way. So I don't know. I doubt these are going to be ready to be unmolded today. Um, but we shall see. I think it's a little too soft. This resin does take longer to cure. Um, uh, let's see how many hours it's now. It's been, actually, it's been about 12 or 13 hours. Um, I do leave it, you know, for at least 24 hours, usually before I unmold something. But if I wanted to kind of add one of those pieces, this is, mm, maybe I, I think I waited a little too long, but maybe not. Um, this may be the mermaid tail and this little kind of jewelry piece here uh, can be used as a jewelry piece. Um, that's what it was meant for. Uh, I think at this point I can actually add uh, some little hooks to it with my little uh, hand drill. So I'm going to actually check that out now before it gets too late and I can't do anything with it. Alrighty, so that's what we're going to be doing today. This could be unmolding and doing some varnish. It's a real quick and easy um, video today, okay? Because I am hard at work uh, working on my Markiplier video. I worked some of it on last night and uh, actually most of the morning. Um, besides actually doing the painting, I actually picked out all my paints are picked out, um, the type of pour I want to do, the idea I have is all done. Um, you know, there was a whole nice section that I did last night and this morning, like I said, uh, that this one, besides actually doing the painting, which I'll do on the day uh, I upload, most likely, um, I just wanted to do one more section. It's a small section, but really important, and you'll see why when you see the whole video. All right, guys, so I will be back in a minute, and we will uh, varnish these, uh, they just came out so pretty. Um, we're going to varnish these tiles. I'll put the cork piece on and we'll unmold these guys. Okay, I will be back in a sec. Okay, bye. <laughs> guys I'm back so we're gonna take this beautiful tile piece this came out really pretty and I have my cork and I'm just gonna move these out of the way 
and this is dry now, so we're not going to have any paint. I'm just going to check that real quick. Nothing. I'm just going to lay that down real quick and try to get it as much uh, centered as possible. Uh, I am not a perfectionist, so I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not measuring or anything. So, that looks good. Simple as that. Can't be any simpler. I'll just press it down a little bit. And now it looks uh, finished, you know? It's a nice piece. And like I said in yesterday's video, I am, and don't forget to get your sides, but I'll show you that in a minute. I don't know if there's any drips, I just kind of take it up, and that's about it, you know? Not a big deal. I'm trying to um, make all these things, A, to sell them, you know? If anyone is interested, they are for sale, but. Um, in my own neighborhood, they have, you know, markets, um, there is 14th Street, I'm actually even thinking about maybe possibly getting a vendor's license, but maybe just doing, like, flea markets is a little cheaper and easier, not much of an investment, and people in my neighborhood kind of like this stuff, there is, um, I live in Jackson Heights, Queens, so we're gonna put this to the side right now, um, in Jackson Heights, Queens, there is the Jackson Heights, I think it's called Beautification, um, like group, I believe that's what it's called, and they do a lot of art stuff and all that, uh, they're more traditional art, which there's nothing wrong with that, um, so I really haven't been much, very interested in kind of joining that group, but I may kind of investigate more with the whole um, flea market stuff because they do do them quite often, especially in the summer. It's like almost every Sunday. So, you know, I'll see how much it is and I'll give it uh, a go and see if I do well. If people aren't interested in my stuff and they just want kind of used stuff, you know, then, you know, I won't do it. I'll maybe, you know, think of other places, maybe in Manhattan. So anyway... Um, I'm just going to pour some right on top. And like that. That should be enough. See? I like pouring a little bit more because then I also kind of do this for my sides. So I'm just going to keep the brush strokes in one direction. And I forgot to put my gloves on, but actually that's okay. It's not a big deal. I did take gloves out and then I didn't use them, but it's all right. Actually, the gloves may stick on here, so I think not having gloves is a little better for me right now. So I'm gonna see, I have to look in the light here, see if I got all my edges. Okay, just gotta hit the edges up like that. And like I said, I'm going to do another coat. I mean, you could do three coats if you want. Like, if you see, like, um, if I see little pieces, like, little spots missing, uh, the medium, I wait until it dries, and then I'll just do another coat and hit that up, uh, rather than just kind of, like, once you put it on, so it's getting, like, sticky. Um, yeah, so I don't want to, like, kind of ruin it. And that's what I do. And then if I need a little more, like for these edges here, what I do is, I got over my hands, but that's okay. I'll put a little on the brush itself. And just hit up the edges. This is how I do it. I'm sure people do it their own way. This is how I do it. You see I missed the whole section here but I just put it down. But like if I notice it like after it starts drying for a while, I'll just wait and um, I'll do another coat later, you know? And that's, it works better for me that way. That way there's no like texture and it's like literally silk leveling, see? If you can see that. Yeah, so. There you go. That's one down. Alrighty. Let's do the second one. Okay. 
Yeah, so I have been working really hard. I know I'm like kind of gassing it up, but it's it's important to me. Um, I think it was a really cool idea that I had to do the Markiplier um, kind of ode to him or dedication video um, because I do watch him. I watch him quite a bit. He inspires me. Um, like I said, he definitely does not need my help when it comes to subscribers. He literally just made the 25 million. He doesn't need my help whatsoever. But you know, um, actually, I was thinking about how many people have actually made, I mean, probably millions, thousands, who knows, uh, have made uh, like fan art for him. And he used to do more videos, like kind of showing that off. He hasn't done that for a while. And people have actually made whole games for him. And I remember uh, one of the games, it was really beautiful. It, it just like touched him deeply. Um, unfortunately, his father had passed away and um, a lot of it had to do with his father. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I thought that was just a really beautiful game. And he sat there and just played the whole game, uh, you know, on a video. So there's number two done. And I think I'm going to torch a little bit. Let me just get my torch real quick. Sorry guys, I forgot to bring it out. But it is in arm's reach. That's what I love about my new setup here. Just a little bit to get any air bubbles. I don't want to get too close. I don't know if anyone else does this with a torch, but I love my torch. It works, so. Like I said, if I missed any spots, it's really not a big deal. Because I am definitely going to go in and keep it uniform. And do uh, an another coat once this dries. For quite some time. Like hours, I'll just leave it alone. And that's it, I'll come back. Yeah, so I'm really um, excited about doing this. I'm putting a lot of work into it. Um, I personally love doing videos. I mean, I love doing videos like this, you know, short little simple videos uh, showing you guys some stuff. But I personally, for my channel, I really enjoy kind of, I guess, like having a theme, uh, really putting a lot of effort into each video. Um, I don't know, just having like a, it kind of like almost like a goal, a theme to the video. It makes, uh, for me personally, doing the videos makes it more interesting to actually create them. And I think you guys actually are liking them. Um, you know, I love doing tutorials, but even within the tutorial, I like, I'm just like being, I get inspired by things, whether it be certain events that are going in like Lunar New Year or uh, Cherry Blossom Season, stuff like that, whether it be holidays like Valentine's. I personally just like having kind of like themes to my paintings and to my videos. And I love coming up with new ideas for you guys and it just really, like I, I was saying in another video, it just like really ha having this channel um, sparks my creativity. I have not had this many ideas, I think, in my whole life. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, I need a little more over here. I think I'm going to add just a little bit. I usually don't do that, but you can. Here, just add a little bit more, get those. And if you see any brush strokes, this stuff really, it just self levels. It does no brush strokes, which is awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna torch this guy real quick. And I try not to overdo it. So there's really, there aren't any drips that are like kind of dripping down. Uh, where's my torch? There we go. And there's really not a lot of bubbles anyway. And like I said, no brush strokes. This is why I love this stuff. 
Yeah, the other medium, the um, Liquitex, I know a lot of people use that. For some reason, maybe it's just me. I'm not doing it right. Or maybe I'm using the wrong type of brush. But um, no matter what I do, uh, I always get brush strokes. And this stuff, like literally just, it, it's, it's amazing. It just self levels and there's no brush strokes. And I'm just like little tiny, tiny um, air bubbles that like just from uh, pouring it down sometimes like air bubbles you know it's normal um, just use the torch and it's awesome so I'm gonna leave this here for uh, well hours and then I will come back and I will uh, do another coat and then I'll just finish it off with the rest of these cork pieces and on each of the backs of them just like this one yeah, this is the one that's finished Okay, I have purposely put paint. I went back onto it and I made sure that all these little edges here were covered in paint. So it just has like a, a finished look from front to back. And that is it. That is my final um, tile. And I would probably sell this as a set. I mean, if someone wanted like an individual ones, but because um, they could pick and choose, like kind of these two kind of go together more. These two kind of... Uh, as far as color scheme goes, but there is similar colors in all four of them. So yeah, I yeah, I'm gonna put this right here. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now. And yeah, I will be right back and we're gonna unmold the uh, resin and then I wanna show you uh, what I did do with the mermaid tail that I made last night. Okay, I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. So I um, went, where's my mic? Oh, there it is, okay. <laughs> I went to wash the brush, and I, like I said, I just used some warm water and some dish soap. I think they have Dawn or something. It doesn't make a difference. And it's a little wet, but then it'll dry nice and soft. Wash my hands, <coughs> excuse me. And what I did do was, before it was too late, this one is really, really soft, and I kinda tried opening it a little bit. I kind of mess it up a little bit um, and I'll show you how I see if you can see those uh, textures now because when I moved it it kind of wrinkled the resin but it's okay it's not a big deal uh, again I'm still learning and this resin is different and it dries differently uh, cures differently excuse me and um, yeah it takes longer this one is incredibly soft but I was able to, because this one pops out really, really easy. See how soft this is? See, it's all bent now, but it's gonna go right back into shape, okay? Um, I caught it before it was too late, before it totally just is very soft still. It's for 12 hours. Usually the other resins I use, by now it's slightly soft, but, it's, but hard enough where you almost can't even put one of these guys in. So what I did, I used my little hand uh, drill that I just bought. I put a little piece in, I made a little hole with it, and I put one of these little, what are they called, eye hooks or something, uh, and that was it. And I stuck it in, now it's very soft, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna put it back in the mold, I'm just gonna lay it down this way, and it kinda slightly press it down so it goes back into shape, and that's it. I'm just gonna leave it now. It's I didn't press it. I just kind of like it almost just kind of falls right back into place. So it dry, it cures straight and not bent. Uh, and that's it. These I know if I pop them out now, they are gonna get rolling. Um, I the tops feel like hard enough, but um, like I said, this resin uh, does take much longer to cure. All right, so I love this. this is so cool and I'm really happy I'm kind of getting a little bit into I'm not into like beads and stuff like that because honestly I don't have the patience whatsoever there is no way I want to do that this kind of jewelry is fun for me you just kind of add a little hook I could just like put a little chain through it and be done <laughs> But like beading, that type of jewelry, I know personally I don't have the patience for it. I really don't. 
Anyway, so let's just unmold this guy. How beautiful! Wow, look at the shine on that. Let's see if I try not to get this. Uh, ring light is always a pain in the butt. Look how shiny this um, uh, sparkly and shiny this dry this cures. So beautiful, and this blue. I am in love with this color blue. It's so pretty. Okay, one down. It's like a little mini coaster that's way too big for jewelry, but I think that's kind of pretty. And, and I love the round coasters. I don't know, there's something about them. Right, this is the Big Daddy. Like I said, I kind of pulled the sides um, a little bit, so it would just be a little easier to unmold. This has been sitting here, oh, maybe a day and a half now, two days. All right, wow. You can see that color. Look at that. That is so beautiful. The shine on that is gorgeous. Look at those colors. I'm trying to see if you can see all those pretty colors. There we go. This can be really, really beautiful. I'm really happy with it. Here, these are the silver glass shards. Um, the micas are from Arteza. Um, the ones in here, anyway, I believe. I think, I don't know if I use some Primal Flow silver, but I think most of these micas are from the uh, Arteza. But all these pieces here, I got the. Uh, these are just like plain glass. These aren't sharp. These pieces right here are plain glass. These are like the turquoise shell pieces. And these are the silver glass shards, but these aren't sharp. I also have that crushed glass, which I did not use in here. Um, and I just layered it. These are two different layers of resin. I put some clear in there and all different colors, just kind of like very like blue shift um, pigment is in here this is uh, I think this, I don't know if this is the Aztec gold or old gold or something like that um, I put some in the center here and definitely got some purple going on and this blue shift and purple or the amethyst I forget which one but it's still a purple color with like blue I just want to get those pretty like aqua colors and the blue with some just clear and the gold and I'm really happy with it yeah with stuff like this I am definitely going a little ASMR I love that anyway <laughs> I'm too loud for that and this house is too loud to do ASMR sorry guys not happening um, yeah like things like that like I said I want to start selling these um, you know, these are great as gifts, obviously, and um, actually the other set of coasters, one of my friend's birthday is coming up, and I will probably give that to her, and she loves stuff like this anyway, and she really appreciates, like, handmade um, gifts and art. So, yeah, so there is that. So, like I said, I'm going to unmold these later. Um, I just want to give you a little close-up of this guy. This is gorgeous. I love, 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 love this neon pink. I am in love with it. The Mica from Primal Flow. And what I did was I didn't put a tremendous amount of Mica in there. I just wanted to kind of be a little, not so opaque, you know, with that chunky um, Cupid glitter in here. And then some of the fairy glitter got stuck in there too. So I cannot wait to unmold this. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love this color. Yeah, and I did put um, one of those eyeballs in this one only. I just wanted to see. I want to really test this liquid glass and see how 
crystal clear, it, it does cure. Um, I don't want to keep on putting mica and mica and mica because then you really can't tell. Um, you can tell if there's bubbles in it, air bubbles, and honestly, so far out of the three, I love the unicone uh, resin. It was really good, not a problem whatsoever, but so far this one uh, definitely, um, it mixes much easier, much faster. There is no odor whatsoever, but regardless whether you smell it or not, you know, I am sure that it's chemicals. You should absolutely do it in a well-ventilated area regardless, um, but it's great that you cannot smell it. And, um, yeah, and so far it's drying pretty crystal, crystal clear to me. I don't want to move this again, but this looks pretty crystal clear to me. So, um, yeah, I will unmold those another day. And, yeah, guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And, yeah, there's one last look at this guy. This is absolutely gorgeous. And this is the finished tile. So I hope you guys make some of these for yourselves. You know, this is a lot of fun. It's really easy. Um, you know, it's like obviously different steps. Um, but this is a beautiful idea for gifts. Uh, if you want to sell them yourself. But this is beautiful ideas for gifts. People that are, you know, housewarming, birthdays, whatever. You know, I think it's really... And then you could personalize them, which is, which I love. Which I absolutely love. That, you know, you make some, something yourself. You could personalize all these, all these objects. Alright, guys. So that is it for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. Please follow me on social media. All my links are in the description below. And yeah, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.